Sometimes we need a border on an element that is not just a simple solid color, like maybe it has two different colors in it, or it has a gradient in it, or it even has some sort of fancy pattern going on with it. And we're going to see how we can do all of those things in this video. Hello my front end friends, thank you so much for coming to join me once again, and if you're new here, my name is Kevin, and here at my channel I help you fall madly, deeply in love with CSS, and we're going to be doing that today by looking at border images, which for me are definitely a blast from the past. If you don't know about the old days of web development, we actually used these to make like buttons with rounded corners and stuff before border radius existed. And I guess I'm showing my age a little bit there, but uh, we can still use border image for some really useful and fun things as well, instead of having to sort of hack solutions like that. So if we dive in, here is a pretty simple example. And we're gonna start with uh, sort of breaking things down in a really simple way. So I have these divs here. We just have three of them that are all this border image that has an H3 and a paragraph in them. And what we're going to do is I have this image that I've already created and I want to use this and we're going to look at why use it. Like I could just set this as a background image because look, I, I left an empty space in the middle and everything for it. But there's downsides to that as you might have discovered if you've tried doing this before. Let's start by doing a border on here. So we're going to say border and we're going to make it pretty big, 40 pixels and we're going to say solid. And it's already white and the reason it is white is because if you don't declare a color on a border it will just take your current text color. So that is there and it's working nicely but obviously we want to get that image in there. And to be able to do that we're going to come in with border image. And you can actually see there's a lot of border image properties including border image width if you use the border shorthand and you set uh, the 40 pixels and a solid there, you don't actually need to use the border image width. You can just leave that and you do need to have the solid on there as well or the image won't show up. So border 40 pixel solid. And then the first one we're going to go with is the source right here to say, well, what's the source of the image? And this is just like anything else, uh, or like setting an image for anything else in CSS where we use the URL function. And in here, you just write the name of the path, which for me is gold blue border dot JPEG, which will bring it in because I haven't done anything fancy. And oh my goodness, that does not look how I expected it to. <laughs> um, and this is where things get a little bit weird with border images. Uh, in, in how it works by default, where it's just setting it on all four corners. And the reason for this is it doesn't know how you want to use the border image. And we sort of have to give it some extra information. And that's what some of these other properties are for. So the next one we're going to do is our border image slice. And the border image slice is an interesting one because it's actually, we're going to slice up our image. I'm going to look at sort of how we can do it, but then some tools that can help you with it. Um, so let's try doing a 40 and just hitting save and my image is sort of coming in. <laughs> look at that. What's happening here? Uh, and if I change this to a 10, that it's well, now I have like a different pattern going on, which kind of looks interesting, um, actually. Uh, or we could try 100 and we have something else going on. And to explain this, I think it's much easier to do it visually. And the border image generator here from Mozilla is actually a pretty good tool for this. Um, and I'm just going to move it to take up more of the screen here. And you can do it with their default images. So you can play with these or you can actually upload your own image. So I'm going to upload mine because I think that's going to be easier to understand what's going on with our own code. All right. So here is the image. And what the slice is doing is it's controlling where these lines are pretty much. And what you generally want to do if you have this type of like patterny thing going on is isolate a corner. So what I'm going to do is let's just drag it sort of to where that the, the end is right here. And I'll just do this quickly. Um, it seems to be on a 50. So let's just do 50 for all of these. And you'll notice while I'm doing this, it's actually showing me a preview. The preview you can move around to try and play with it just to get it where you want. And what this is doing is it's actually showing me what I want my slice to be. So border image slice here. And I think I'm just going to do 40 um, for all of them for now, just for the like demo purposes. So let's just move that back in and let's try putting 40 here and seeing what happens. And you can see, look at it, it's filling up or maybe 48 actually would have been better. Let's try 48. Um, I mucked up my bottom a little bit, but it's fine. Uh, so what's happening here is it's putting in that background image and it's taking each one of these corner bits that I sliced and it's locking those corners into that space. So the corners are always locked. The corners will never change. What will change is these middle bits that are able to stretch and pull a little bit. And I think to highlight that, what we'll do is we'll actually eliminate one of these. We'll just comment it out and see how it sort of stretched that top bit across now. So if we um, now, actually, if I change the screen size, let's do this with the dev tools. 
Uh, so if I open the dev tools and then I just go to responsive mode and let's undock this. So they're not in the way. And now we can actually see that like the, the top bit is stretching and, and filling, but the corners are really locked in. And like here, like this looks really ugly up and down, whereas across here is looking okay and the corners are looking fine. So it really depends on like how the layout is, it's stretching, pulling, it's kind of awkward a little bit. But we can improve on this and that doesn't have to be the behavior that we're actually getting. So one way we can change what that behavior is, is to do a border image repeat. And this isn't the repeat that you would think of, um, where we have the default is actually repeat. If you leave repeat, nothing much will change here. Um, but one that I find really useful is round. And what round is going to do is it should show us more. See, if, if we look at the top bit here, notice how it's repeating the background, that like pattern here. For, we have four of whatever this shape is. And then once it starts running out of room for that and it's getting too squished, it's actually changing how that pattern is repeating itself. And then it's changing it again. Oh, it won't actually. Okay. So it's repeating and repeating. Then we're running into this world like here. It actually looks pretty good because it's the right shape. So what we can actually do for that is change here also how things are working a little bit. So I'm going to actually change my number here to like an 80 instead, just to show you a little bit of I think it just looks a little bit nicer overall in how it's repeating. Now I have a problem with my, my blue coming through. We're gonna fix that problem in a second because it's using part of that. But you can see that it just sort of, it's repeating itself, but because it's 80 and it's changed my slice number on there, um, basically, let's go look at what that's doing is it's actually doing an 80 this way, but it also means the corners are a little bit bigger and they're coming down more this way and that way. So my corner sections are bigger and the background piece that has to repeat is not as big as it used to be. This section here is much smaller than it was. So because that section is smaller, it actually repeats a little bit better. Um, and it's able to shrink down and grow uh, everything a little bit better. So it looks a little bit less ugly. Now I mentioned there's the ugly thing with the background color here. Now, of course, I could just do this on a transparent background and then not worry about that. But another thing we can do with the slice is we can add a fill here. So if I do a fill, it's actually going to take the color that's in the middle here and use that as a background color or background image as well. So if you had a pattern that was coming here, it would use that as the background image for the middle space. And the fill keyword can go anywhere because right now I'm using 80. But as you see here, I can actually do different sizes and I can, you know, I can control this in any way I really want to do. And so you can have separate properties for each one of your border image slices uh, and you just repeat the values. So here uh, I could do something like, you know, 40, 80, 120 and 200. If I wanted to, it's going to muck everything up. It doesn't work with this image. Uh, and it's even mucking up my background a little bit because of that. But it gives you an idea that you can put different values and that fill keyword can either go at the end here or I could take the fill and I should be able to, I think, put it at the start and it should work fine. Just don't put it right in the middle because um, then it sort of breaks things and the property doesn't work anymore. So I'm going to take the fill off of there and let's put the fill back here and let's just put this back down over to an 80. Um, and it does take setting up an image and getting the image, a, a decent image that you can use um, to be able to do this type of thing. And there's, you know, just looking at border images and stuff like that, you should be able to get things that repeat themselves and actually work out pretty well. Um, and you might just have to play with where your slices are to get things to line up. So the repeating behavior of it actually looks good and you're not getting breaks in really strange places. Uh, but that's not all we can do. We can do stuff with gradients as well, because gradients are a type of background image. So this is where I think some of the more today use cases come in. So if we come here and I do a, uh, we'll do the same thing. We're going to do a border. Uh, let's just do 10 pixels solid, but instead of doing it on all sides, cause we could do that. I could just say border top. And by specifying that I only have a border on the top, then I can have a gradient only on the top. Um, so let's add a little bit of space there. So when you do a padding block start of 10 pixels, and actually if I'm doing block start here, I think border also takes logical properties. So we'll add that there. Perfect. Um, you know, so you can just control your, your one right there. Um, but now what I could do is I can come in with my background image source and I can say it's a linear gradient and let's just put this on a separate line so we don't have to worry too much. And let's just do a red blue and hit save. Uh, of course, it's not background image source, it's border <laughs> border image source, sorry. 
Uh, but you'll notice I don't actually have anything. And you're going, well, I put it. Why isn't it showing up? And even though we're doing it with a gradient, you still need to have your border image slice for this to work. And I'm just going to put a one and you can see it has actually come in. Now, the problem is because my gradient by default is up to down, it looks like it's solid red. So let's just come here and do a, uh, whoops, and do a 90 degrees. So it turns it left to right. You can see there's my gradient. And you know what, let's not do that on all the sides. Let's just do border on all the sides and do my padding on all the sides. And you know, there you go. Or I guess then we don't need 90 degrees. We could do like a 45 degrees. Uh, and you get sort of a border that's going around. And as I, you could actually come here and change your slice number. Um, and you might find that it's gonna impact how things look. Um, if I had the fill on here, it would actually look really weird. Let's throw the fill. So you can see it creates this really kind of awkward thing um, with bigger numbers. I'm not actually sure how it works with gradients with the fill. I just put one and it tends to work. Um, so <laughs> that's my, my method. Um, but let's go back a little bit. Let's actually, we'll copy this one so we can work a little faster. Um, and we're gonna do one small tweak on this one, which is let's go back to the inline start actually for these two, um, or block start, I should say, block start. But instead of having it go like this where it's an actual gradient, let's change this over to 90 degrees so it is left to right. And then what we could actually do on this, and we're gonna extend this out so we can see the code, is after the red and after the blue, these are the gradient stops. And this is the updated syntax. Um, the older syntax was a little bit harder to put gradient stops in, but now it's nice and easy. So the red goes to 50%, the blue is basically starting at 50% um, and it creates a solid line. And then maybe, you know, let's do this at like five um, or three. You might have a design or something that needs sort of this two colored line for something. I've seen stuff like that come up and it looks like it would be really hard to do. But luckily, it's not that bad. It's actually kind of easy um, with with that. You can do it with pseudo elements and other stuff, but with a border, it works perfect. And there we go. And another fun effect that we could do with this with gradients is taking advantage of transparency. So let's do a border. Let's do our border on my inline start as well as a border uh, block start. So it's on the left and the top. And for each one of those, we'll just say that it, for now, we'll do 10 pixels solid. And so we get it on both of those and we'll add the padding there as well. Padding inline. Uh, we'll just speed this up with doing it on all sides. And so we get a bit of space there. And then what we could do is instead of using a linear gradient, we could come in with a radial gradient. So let's do border uh, image source and a radial gradient. And the reason I want to do a radial gradient is even though we're only placing the uh, the border on these two right here, it's if we come into this radial gradient, let's just turn formatting off for now so it stops formatting my code. We're going to do for this one a circle at top left. So it's going to be a radial gradient as a circle starting at the top left right here. And because it's a circle at the top left, we're going to break this up. There we go. Uh, we're going to go from lime green to trans transparent. And of course, it just takes up the corner because hopefully you remember that we need to have a border image slice, throw a one on there and cool, right? Now, part of the problem is the transparent's not really kicking in where I want it to. So let's come in here and say that, that like 50% is where the transparent's at. Uh, and there you go. You get this sort of like interesting um, border effect and maybe 10 is a bit big here. Let's do like a three or a four uh, and you can sort of get this interesting effect. Definitely not something you'd use on every single site of yours, but it could come in handy in the right situation. And if you'd like to know more about gradients and the types of things you can do with stops and radial gradients and other linear gradients and all the fun things you can do with them, I do have a video right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Jan, Johnny, Kyle, Mr. Dave, Patrick, Simon, Steven, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their generous support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.